so very much tonight. Kerry Wood makes his triumphant return tonight as the Cubs entertain the Houston Astros tonight on Cubs Net here at Wrigley Field. Hello again, everybody, along with Steve Stone, Chip Kerry, and what a night. An electric atmosphere at Wrigley Field as Kerry Wood nearly two days, two years to the day, after punching out 20 Astros, faces Houston again. After that long wait, Kerry Wood is finally here. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He says he's good for 100 pitches. I am excited, too. Jose Lima, he of the long ball, will be the pitching opponent tonight. Hopefully, he'll have that shoulder ball at us again. Gary Wood faces the Astros tonight here in Chicago. Starting night for more on Cubs Net right after this. Chicago Cubs baseball brought to you by Brewery Fresh Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. This bud for you. for the first time in the year 2000. Tony, everybody in baseball eagerly anticipating this first start of the season and how ironic it is he faces the team that first him on the scene nationally, a 20 strikeout affair against the Houston Astros nearly two years ago to the day. That was just his fifth major league start. He's had a few since then, but he's been off quite some time. And it's up to Joe Girardi to settle him down because quite obviously there's going to be a lot of adrenaline pumping man he's going to be very psyched up and when you are that psyched up you have a tendency to leave the first man he's going to look at Craig Beatfield is one of the best in this league at getting on base he's not going to swing at any bad pitches so you've got to just key it down a little bit which is going to be tough to do and I, see, I think his arm is going to be terrific so here come the Astros albeit uh, not too excitedly as they face Terry Wood here tonight to look at their lineup <laughs> Well, the top three in the order. Third, Daryl Ward in left, Richard Hidalgo in right, Mitch Molusky to switch hitting catcher, Bill Spires at short, and Jose Lima pitches and bats ninth against Harry Wood. And the Pepsi defense. As you see, Rodriguez, Buford, and Sosa left to right. Green, Young, and Grace in the infield. Joe Girardi behind the plate. And for the first time in a long time, we can tell you that Kerry Wood starting for the Cubs tonight. And Craig Biggio, the man that faces it. Remember that May start two years ago? The first pitch of the game in that 20 strikeout performance was the most important one. And the first one is a laser beam fastball fouled straight back. It's nothing in one. The umpires, Mike Victor by Tim Walke, Gary Cedars. fastball strikes and he said no sense looking for the good for hitting me. Today goes back to trouble hitting everything. A 188 batting average and Ricky Gutierrez from his knees. Can he throw him out? No he can't. Infield hit. Bang bang play at first and Cedeno aboard with one out here in the top of the first. Well, that's why they got Cedeno from the New York Mets because he can fly ground ball to Gutierrez. He had to take a step to his right and from his knees trying to throw out the speedster and he can't get him. This is a good effort but he can't balance himself. Tries to throw from one knee. He's got a strong arm but not quite strong enough to get to Daniel. So no no hitter tonight. That would be a little bit too much to expect out of Kerry Wood. I really think that that's going to be the chance to keep some perspective here. Well back. Love. And on the way to second goes to Daniel on the wild pitch. Remember the Kerry Wood we saw two years ago was as Steve mentioned making his fifth start. He was not here. It is going to be a learning process for Kerry Wood as we go along here. Well, he also has yet to throw a breaking ball of any sort. That's four straight fast. Is that one well up and out of the zone? And Jeff Bagwell off to one of the best starts of his career. So a runner at
at second for the Astros here in the first. And Bagwell hits a high fly ball, shallow left. Easy play for Rodriguez. He's got it. And there's out number two. What are the expectations for Kerry Wood here tonight? I think Kerry would like to go into the seventh inning. I think he feels that if he can keep his pitch count to a minimum, he feels he can go a complete ball game. I think that might be a little overambitious. I'd like to see him throw a few breaking balls just to get the feel for it. But right now, he's staying with the fastball. It's pretty good. It's probably maybe 94, perhaps 95 at this point. He'll get a little harder as the evening goes along and he gets looser. He'll probably get it up to 97, 98. Here's Ken Caminiti, the switch hitting third baseman. And he takes a ball high. Wood has not going to come in and try to strike everybody out. That bodes well for him as this game goes along. Two, two very easy outs and infield hit by Cedeno, although that ball was hit very sharply. been bothered with a sore left hamstring for much of this 2000 campaign but still he's hit five home runs and has driven home 20. RBI chance for him here in the first. And that slider dancing across the shoe tops and the Astros are not going to be comfortable up there that's for sure. All five of Caminiti's home runs have come from the left side or he's always been a more powerful hitter. Well balanced, 333 right-handed, 326 left-handed. So he's off to a very good start, but he's not going to beat out any infield hits. Three balls and a strike to Caminiti. Ball four misses down and in. There's one for Kerry Wood. Cedeno remains at second. And here's a guy with a real beautiful left-hand swing. Fielder Daryl Ward. When I ask him what makes Ward a good hitter, Field and a standing ovation for the great right hope Kerry Wood. Could you use an extra seventy-five dollars for the first? And a look at the Cubs Pepsi lineup as presented by skipper Don Baylor has Eric Young and Ricky Gutierrez, the terrific one-two punch at the top of the order, and Gutierrez has murdered his ex-mates. Mark Race batting third at first, then it's Sammy Sosa, Henry Rodriguez in left. Willie Green gets the start at third with the right-hander on the mound. Damon Buford in center. And Kerry Wood. He threw a very good game against the Cubs in his ballpark last year. And he, as you said, threw just a terrible game down in Houston. So, you know, he'd like to have payback time here tonight. Eric Young, one of the Cubs who took him deep. A leadoff homer back on April the 27th. Young with a home run, nine RBIs, quickly down two strikes. The pitching coach of this team, Vern Rule, was talking about Lima, and he said he just is... Trying to get a little too fine this year. He's been getting behind. He's been trying to nip the corners early instead of going right at hitters and then use the corner to wipe the hitter out. And there's a look at Larry Durker, the fine manager, the Houston Astros. Three straight division
year. We both talked to Biggio, and he told us that one of the toughest plays in this league is on the grass when the ball comes from the dirt to the grass here. And I think the ground crew has addressed that. There was a pretty big lip where the dirt went to the grass before, but now when I talk to all the infielders around the league, they tell me that this dirt and the field is better than they've ever seen it. So Biggio made the first play in exactly the same spot as he was telling us how difficult it was. And Ricky Gutierrez, the Cubs shortstop, stands in and takes a ball. Yeah, there is a bit of a lip behind second base. Maybe a five to six inch downslope from the dirt to as an infielder for the field. And you get a lot of cheap hits that way. But he made a terrific play to open up the ball game. And Gutierrez, who has crushed for the win. Big win has to come. And Timmy here in Houston has a nice one. So he can give you a team for this. And he can be a very good pitch here at 51. So you've got to be ready for the fastball. He's been in usually that pitch and throw in that quickly throw to him today. One pitch. Little looper into center field. But right at Cedeno. He's got it. He's boxed. That left field fence was right behind the shortstop. Here he's challenging the hitters a little bit more. And he's been around the plate more. And I guess the only comparison would be for an American League pitcher pitching in any other ballpark over there and making a start for the first or second time at Fenway Park in Boston. You obviously had done that. What is that sensation like, and how did you put that very close wall out of your mind? Well, I knew that I had two fields to pitch to in Boston, center and right field, and the same thing is true in Houston. But if you go in, you have to go way in. Grace up the middle. Biggio to his right. Can't make a play. Well, that's a play normally he does make. They're probably going to give him a base hit, but I'll tell you what. Greg Biggio, who's a gold glove second baseman, will make that play eight out of ten times, maybe nine out of ten times. Unfortunately for the Cubs, he didn't make it this time. He's there, but it drops out of his glove. Still no ruling. If it's an error, it'll be the third on Biggio. So whatever you want to score it, it puts Grace at first. And here's Sammy Sosa, who has nine hits, four of them home runs against Lima Lifetime. And Gracie gets the base hit. So here's Sammy, a chance to put the Cubs up by a pair in the first with two outs. And he hits that one into right center field. Cedeno got a very good jump. He dives. Did he make the catch? No, they say he trapped it. Heading toward third is Grace. They're at the corners now. Dale Scott. I think we've seen the umpiring crews doing a lot more of that this season than they do jurisdiction under Major League Baseball for the umpires. As Henry stands in with two on and two out. Henry with seven homers and 16 batted in in the last 10 Cub games. Sosa running. The pitch is low. The throw to second is in plenty of time. Terrific throw by Mitch Molusky erases Sosa at second. He's caught stealing for the second time this year, and that retires the Cubs in the first. No runs, a pair of hits, one man left after one. It's a scoreless game. Aggressiveness is one thing, Chip. I like the selective aggressiveness. If you get a man at first, the first base would have to be able to get the base out of the crowd. And by running, we saw Sammy, who maybe had lost about a step, out by 20. And Molusky took a look at Grace and said, Thanks for throwing me to the second. So still had him by quite a bit. So it was a very good throw. It got the Cubs taken out of that first inning when Lima looked to be on the rope. Carry 
things off here in the second inning. Hidalgo hitting 275, six homers and 22 batted in. He's also been a ball magnet. He's I'm, been hit seven times. I was going to say, this is Don Baylor's kind of player. Well, I don't think he wants to get hit this evening because I don't know who has hit him, but I don't think they threw as hard as Kerry Wood. I think Oral Hershiser got him three times out in L.A. Ball one low. That's the game, I think, when Hershiser hit five guys in one start for Los Angeles. That's a rough outing. Scoreless game, and Hidalgo hits it softly into shallow right center. Sammy comes charging in, dives, and he comes up. Did he hang on? Yeah, he did. What a catch. Well, I think Sammy knocked the wind out of him. He made a terrific catch. I think he's going to be okay. And Don Bale. Sammy made the catch with the full out dive, and it was a terrific play. Don Baylor holding his breath as Sammy dove for that one. He's holding his breath while Sosa tries to catch his. <laughs> Another look at a great running catch in right. Pretty good effort by Sosa, and he hits the ground awfully hard. So one away in the second. Wood still looking for his first strikeout of the game. But do you like the way he and Girardi are working at this point? We haven't seen a whole lot of the breaking stuff yet. No, but what I do like, Chip, is he's getting the ball over early. And these guys don't want to get to the point where he wipes them out with the breaking ball, so they're swinging a lot of fastballs, using their aggressiveness against them. So here's Molesky, who made that fine throw to erase Sosa. His first time trying to steal today. pitch count on Wood tonight. He feels that he can go up over 100. That one might have been close. <laughs> two and two. I think he'll actually throw harder as the game moves along, but right now, he's got some movement on the fastball. It's moving away from the left-hand hitters. And he's just going with the fastball. But here's the first changeup, Chip. This is the pitch that he's really worked on hard. And the pitch that really could make him even more deadly than he already is. That's the pitch that because of the Tommy John surgery in lieu of throwing the breaking balls, the changeup. Let's take a look in at Joe Girardi and find out just exactly what he wants. I'm Two offering is. Looked like a changeup, and it was. And it's an easy out for Grace over at first. Well, if he can get some outs on the changeup, that's something that no hitters have seen from Kerry Wood. And he had Molesky well out in front of it. Get a one hopper right at Grace. And so far, no breaking balls, but so far, no runs. And that's the most that's, important thing. And no strikeouts either, but who cares as long as he puts up a W. There's no pictures in the scorebook. They don't ask you how you did it, just what you did. So the number eight hitter, Bill Spires, will get the start tonight. 
The Astros really have had some problems filling that shortstop position. Tim Bogar has gotten the bulk of the playing time there. Spires has been a jack of all trades along the infield, the outfield, a very good pinch hitter. But Bogar in the midst of a one for 13 slump. Spires to the left hand back gets the start tonight. Count. Well, Lima 0 for 9 with six strikeouts, so I'm not sure if he's going to make a great deal of trouble for Cherry Wood. And there is the move made today to activate Cherry, and they send down Roosevelt Brown. 3 1. That's low. Second Wood walk, so Lima will bat here in inning number two. Everybody wants to see Cherry do well. I mean, that goes without saying. Even in that Cub clubhouse, you've got guys that have been around the game for so long. Mark Grace, for example, Billy Williams got to the ballpark an hour, two hours earlier than normal just because they were so excited, not just about the game, but for Kerry Wood. They know how hard he has worked to make this comeback and make it all the way back. And there's also a lot of pitchers around baseball that have been surgically repaired that are rooting for Kerry to come back. And a lot of pitchers who have recently gone through the Tommy John surgery that want to see Kerry do real well to give them a little hope that they can go through a very tough surgery and come back and still have pretty good stuff. 1-0 to Lima. Going away, two balls, no strike. had very, very sitting here not really knowing what to expect. I mean, there's a sense of nervous anticipation here. They want to explode, but they don't know when to do it. Well, they can express their anticipation with the first strikeout that he makes right here. 2-2. Two, two. Rip straight back. Scoreless game in the second. Cool 57 degree night. You can see Carey with a good bit of perspiration going, and he's starting to loosen up. Three and two. Kind of overthrow that one a little bit. I don't know if you need all that much for Jose Lima. And the last thing in the world you want to do is walk him ahead of Craig Biggio. So Spires will be off and running with two outs. Count full, three and two here in the Astros second. in five days and I just don't want him to go out and give up a bunch of runs or walk the park or something like that. I just want him to pitch well and I want us to score some runs for him. I, 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 just, I don't want to win this game more than any other game at all, but I just, I just want the kid to pitch well. And I think everybody in baseball, with the exception of the Astros, feels that way. And Don Baylor talking with Kerry Wood. Big smile on the young man's face. He says, okay, you got your two innings in. You know your arm's not going to fall off. Now go to work, and you got to be real happy with him so far. Henry slaps that ball to left. Ward misplays it. It's over his head. Henry.
Montgomery's going to try for two. The throw is an eyelash late. And how nice would it have been to have Henry in the box and that play taking place. Instead, we got thrown out at second. And now it's a leadoff double. Well, their award shows you why a lot of people think he's going to be a good DH someday because he gets frozen on this ball and by the time he realizes it's over his head he's got to play it off the wall now this part of it's pretty good he makes a good bare hand catch gets it into second base but Henry slides in just before it now it's up to Willie Green to try to pull the ball he's got to move Henry along as the Cubs would like and try to get Cardinals have a 2-0 lead over Pittsburgh. I think Jason Schmidt is starting that game for the Pirates tonight. He is. Fly drive, right field corner. In for a hit. Henry can crawl home. Green on his way to second. It's back-to-back -back doubles, and the Cubs lead by a run. Jose Lima tried to sneak a fastball by Willie Green, and he just crushes the ball down the line. Good thought process, because he was trying to pull this ball all the way. And he winds up with a two-base hit. His second run driven in. The Cubs are on the board, and they've got a lead. The fastball right down the middle, and that's what Lima has done a lot of this year. He has split the plate, and you've heard a wild in the strike zone. That's exactly what he's been this season, and he has gotten pounded by the National League. That is already the 30th run in 32 innings given up by the Houston right-hander. Remember, this is a man that won 20 games last year. So here's Buford. He bunts the ball high in the air. Can anybody catch up to it? No. And it bounces into the seats for a strike. Again, the Cubs, as has been their modus operandi, continue to use the sacrifice. In fact, the Cubs are 25 to the bag and just plain missed it. That would be his first error of the year, folks. And it is a sack E3. Good bunt by Buford. And watch a rare misplay by a very good first baseman. Well, the things you're seeing this Astro team do are the reason why they're four games under 500. Mistakes on the mound, mistakes in the field, and missed opportunities at the plate. So the Cubs have him at the corners already leading by a run, and Joe Girardi, the Cub hitter. And one of the things they do have with Kerry Wood in the lineup is a pretty good hitter in the number nine spot. Girardi, a slow roller hit towards short. Spires has only one play. It's to first. Girardi drives home his fifth run of the year, and it's two to nothing Cubs. Buford to second with one out, and here comes Kid K. Here, 
waiting for any chance to explode, have just exploded. The first pitch Harry Wood saw, he hit out of the ballpark. Folks, you talk about irony. It's all happening against the Astros. Mel Gibson's going to sing the seventh inning stretch. And folks, you couldn't have read a better script for a Hollywood actor than what you're seeing right now. Take another look at Kerry Wood on the first pitch he saw. Lima got it up and out over the plate, and Kerry knows it's gone. He hasn't had a whole lot of time to work on that home run trot, but he's going to grow into it if he keeps on hitting like that. Here's that's third it. major league home run. Boy, that's something. Matt Beach, Brett Tomko, and now Jose Lima have surrendered long balls to Kerry Wood. <laughs> and a trace of a smile from the young Texan as he's helped himself to a four to nothing lead. Jose Lima came into this one at one and four with an. things to say. I mean, the man that you're looking at has grown up before our very eyes, and that man is quite obviously delighted to have an ace number one and potential cleanup hitter back in his starting rotation. Kerry Wood hits a two-run homer in the second, capping a four-run inning, and after two, Kid K. Yes, indeed, he's doing a favor with impersonation. He can hit, he can pitch. He leads it by four after two. It's four to nothing after two. And Kerry Wood with a strikeout and a home run. And, you know, Steve, you can just tell, not only just in the ball. What a lift. expect the pitching plan to change for Wood second time through the order. A lot of fastballs through the first nine hitters. Well, the first breaking ball he threw hung up there, and hopefully he'll get the feel of that. He's got to throw a few more, try to keep him down. But right now, he's not having too much difficulty with his lineup using essentially one pitch and the occasional straight change. But Joe Girardi so far has handled him well. Here's another change. And it's in for a strike. To Roger Cedeno, who legged out an infield hit his first time up. You cannot overestimate the importance of that man behind the plate tonight for the Cubs. You know the juices for Kerry Wood are flowing. And you know Joe Girardi, with all those World Series rings and all that championship experience, is going to know how to handle the emotions of the young right-hander for the Cubs. Well, that's why he's called very few breaking balls. And Gary Wood has a lot of confidence in Joe because he's not shaking him off at all. As soon as Joe puts down a finger, 
Jerry Wood throws whatever he wants. portion of this homestand ahead of them. It's three with Houston, three with Pittsburgh, four with Milwaukee. Three teams the Cubs should match up very well against, especially at home, and there are plenty of seats available for the entire homestand. And this is a homestand that the Cubs have to take advantage of. Three, two. Check swing and off the facade of our dugout. And the reason, quite simple, if you look at this team's schedule in the month of September, I mean, it's like the Baton Death March, folks. Only 10 games at home. But in the month of May and June, chance to make some hay. Well, that's what we look forward to, and you can see only five games in red the entire month of May. So they're going to be here a lot. Again, the 3-2 to Cedeno. And again, he swings late. And out of play. The Astros, Stoney had to dump Derek Bell. Had to get rid of Mike Hampton, who's a free agent at season's end. They have cut their payroll. They got Dotel and Cedeno back. And Carl Everett was a huge loss yeah. for them because the switch hitter is just... They're not near the team they were last year. It's going to be a big challenge for them. And they've got to reverse the trend in their home park because so far it's been a home park liability for them. Sedeno's running. The pitch is low and away. The Girardi throw is not nearly in time. Sedeno has his 10th steal in 11 tries. Boy, he is poetry in motion, isn't he? Well, this is the National League leader in stolen bases. And he takes off, even four runs down. If you got a speedster, you use him. Last year stole 66. And this year, probably going to steal a few more, because there's not a whole lot of speed on this Houston team. So a runner in scoring position, and Bagwell takes a strike. The whole Houston team has stolen 21 bases. And Cedeno has just under half of them. So it's a good idea to keep him at bay if he can do it. 1-1. One, one. This is low and away. Two balls and a strike. Rooftops are packed. In fact, in talking with Frank Maloney, the ticket manager for the Cubs, they were expecting to sell standing room only seats. And it looks like that has come to pass. At the ballpark tonight. 2-1. Inside. Now Bagwell can lock in. Is that like jumbo shrimp? Standing room only seat? Is that what I said? <laughs> Thanks. It is like jumbo shrimp. <laughs> Rip straight back. Okay, Mr. <laughs> Kidney Stone over there. <laughs> Folks, you gotta hey, it send in your home <laughs> remedies to my partner, Stephen. <laughs> It hasn't been so, the greatest of seasons. No, it so is far. not. Not for you. Let's see. Valley fever. <laughs> you were felled by a milk dud. <laughs> what else is there? Just a small kidney stone. Uh, a little kidney stone. What's next? The pitch popped up. Shallow right. Sammy late charging. Still coming in. Puts it away. Four out number two. Keep in mind, this is the first night game of the year. And Sosa not getting the greatest of jumps in the gloaming hour of the day. But you couldn't have a better night for it as Jeff Bagwell, very frustrated by that swing. He got a pitch to hit. It was up in the zone. Just was a touch tardy. And pops it up to Sammy. I think so far, Chip, forget the home run. 
The fact that he hasn't used the strikeout as much as he normally does, this is a tremendous triumph for Kerry Wood. No doubt about it. To be back in pitching. And he's got to be happy because he's rediscovered a changeup that he used at times before, but very rarely. And if he gets that going for him. Well, you think about all the great power pitchers, the Gibsons, the Drysdales, the Koufaxes, J.R. Richard, Nolan Ryan, Randy Johnson. The art of learning how to pitch is what made those guys complete pitchers. It took Nolan Ryan an awful long time. We saw what Randy Johnson, the finished product, looked like one game ago here. Caminiti has to skip the rope, and with some bad knees and a bad hamstring, that can't be real comfortable. You don't have any bad hamstrings yet, do you? No, that's the one part of me that's pretty good. <laughs> the one one is inside. <laughs> Hernia too, right? Just occasionally. Oh. <laughs> Red's starting to swing the bat, and I'm sure they're happy to see that man, Sean Casey, back in the lineup. The Phillies continue to struggle through a miserable offensive first five weeks of the year. Well, Philadelphia just seven and seventeen, and they're not hitting anything. That ball hit high in the air into right field. Playable for Sosa. Easy play there. He's got it. And Kerry Wood strands another Astro. He's through three. He's in the low 50s with the pitch count. Oh, and by the way, he's also hit home run. It's 4 nothing with Sammy due up second. The center of our screen is the general manager of WGN-TV, John Vitanovic, along with big Hollywood superstar Frank Gallo. You might have recognized Frank as an actor in the movie Analyze This and also owns the Hole in the Wall in Northbrook. And they're both enjoying the return of Kerry Wood tonight at Wrigley Field. Four to nothing in favor of the Cubs with Grace Sosa and Rodriguez up against the enigmatic right-hander Jose Lima who just looks like on the whole he'd rather be in Philadelphia right now. He's having a tough time not only in this game but this year. We get an ERA up close to nine. And things aren't going very well for you. And Vern Rule really can't figure it out. He's trying to help him. But coming off a year last year when he was 21 and 10 with an ERA in the mid threes, this has been most disappointing because he's one of the leaders of this staff. And he walks Grace on four pitches, his first free pass of the night. You just look at his body language, Steve. It's almost like. He has no idea why the magic has disappeared. He's grooving an awful lot of pitches, and quite obviously they're getting hit, and he's getting hit hard. But if you talk to some of the Houston people, too, they say it's his own hard-headedness that's leading to these kinds of problems. Well, he had a couple of good years in a row. Don't forget, this is a guy that came over from Detroit, had all kinds of problems there. Then they made a big deal, and he came over from the Tigers, and really chief stardom in the Astrodome. He had a lot of confidence in that ballpark, and they had a very good team behind him. And he turned his whole career around. Home run cut by Sammy. It's nothing in one. Needless to say, Kerry Wood gave Sammy Sosa and his Cub team a huge lift in that magical 1998 season. Well, Sammy homered in a lot of Kerry starts, but this time Kerry didn't wait for Sammy to homer. He decided to homer himself. <laughs> the 0-1 backs him up and evens the count. Well, when Lima first came to Houston, he was used as a reliever exclusively, and he went 1-6. and six. Then they made him a starter in 98, 16-8, and eight, and last year 21-10. and 10. Grace at first, and Sammy rips it back. Two strikes. The Cubs try to win our third game in four tries against the defending Central Division champions. Strike three call of the outside corner. Sammy not too sure. And Lima has his second punch out of the game. Sosa caught looking on a pitch that looked a bit outside. That's Olesky not even close. Set up outside, and this ball was even farther. He didn't want to pull the glove back for 
fear that Mike Victor wouldn't give it to him, but he did anyway. Well, that might be good news for Kerry Wood if that strike zone is going to expand a bit. And here's Henry, who doubled and scored his first time around. Good to see Henry starting to swing a hot bat. Finally, he's gotten over the 200 mark. He's always been a notorious slow starter. But of late, he has been roasting hot. And the key for Henry, as he said, was to stay more quiet. He was getting too much movement, especially with his lower body. He was drifting out, not staying behind the ball. And staying behind the ball and waiting for it allowed him to double into left field the first time up. In fact, Daryl Ward is very far back in left field. He's not going to let anything get over his head without it going out of the ballpark. He decided to set up on the warning track. I mean, he has played that double about as badly as you can. He just froze. He didn't know whether to come in or go back. And then finally, he went and picked up the baseball. And Henry walks on four straight. So two are on, one is out. And Willie Green, who doubled down the right field line, will stand in. I think we're going to have a trip to the mound by Vern Rule. We're going to suggest to Jose Lima that he get the ball over the plate. That would be the golden rule, if I'm not mistaken. That's him. Friends, don't forget, it's Wizards of the Coast Day at the ballpark. The first 12,000 kids, 13 and under, attending the Cubs-Pirates game May 7th. will receive an MLB Showdown 2000 card game from Wizards of the Coast. Don't forget to stop by their store at Woodfield Mall before May 2nd to enter for a chance to throw out the first pitch during that May 7th game. For Cubs tickets, call 312-831-CUBS. Now, this is the last season that all three of these guys pitched in the Astrodome, which, as you can see, was very pitcher-friendly. After that, Kyle went to Colorado. Hampton went to New York. Lima stayed here but had to pitch an end-run field. And none of them really had a good year the first year out of the Dome. Willie Green will be the batter. I don't think I've ever heard... Our hitters say, gosh, I'm sorry to be leaving Houston. And that's exactly what they were saying when we left at the end of this past road trip. Green looks inside, ball one. Well, if he keeps going at Willie Green with just fastballs, he's going to have some big problems. And this could easily be a 7 to nothing game. Because Willie Green is a terrific fastball hitter. Catches the outside corner. Cincinnati crushing the Phillies now. 6-0 in the sixth. Philadelphia only one hit in the game. Three errors so far. It was Andy Ashby against Steve Paris tonight. Arizona and Milwaukee are scoreless in the fourth. Cardinals lead the Pirates 2-1 now. And they're just getting set to go in Colorado where the Expos will play the Rockies. Later on, Florida is in San Diego. Atlanta... We'll put a 14-game winning streak on the line against the Dodgers, and the Mets are in San Francisco. Was there any easier vote than our vote for National League Pitcher of the Month? The only person who deserved more consideration than Vladimir Guerrero and Randy Johnson was you for everything you've gone through. Well, I'll tell you, Randy Johnson, a guaranteed Pitcher of the Month, and I think Vladimir Guerrero wins the Player of the Month. Inside again. Three balls and a strike, and what sold me on Guerrero is what he did against us. And with all those incredible power numbers, only four strikeouts on the year. And hitting a robust four-something. Ho-hum. What a player he is. Man. Runners are going three and one. Double clutch by Molesky, and uh, Caminiti saves an air. So the Cubs steal second and third. The count full now to Green. Man, that was the gamble by Don Baylor, and if Molesky doesn't double clutch, Mark Grace is out by plenty. But I think he surprised him. He's got a pretty good ball to handle, but the double clutch and Caminiti never even tried to tag it. No, he was just worried about making sure the ball didn't wind up in left field. Infield in now, 3-2. Ground ball, threw it for a base hit. That'll score Grace. Henry will stop at third, had to make sure the ball got through. So it's 5 to nothing. The drawn in infield and the stolen bases adds up to our fifth run of the game. So Green two for two with a pair of runs driven in. When you bring the infield in, you set up a world of possibilities. If the guys don't run, that's probably a double play ground ball with BGO back. But that's the second run batted in for Willie Green and runners at the corners. Now the Cubs starting to pull away. 
Five to nothing for Buford, who reached on a Bagwell error on a sacrifice play. And Lima delivers a quick strike. Five runs, six hits for the Cubs. No runs, one hit, one error for Houston. 0-2 oh to Damon Buford. There's a young fan enjoying Kerry Wood night at the ballpark. Buford goes fishing and chases a ball out of the strike zone. 27 strikeouts for Damon on the year. And there's a big second out here in the third before Joe Girardi hits. Let's pause quickly for station identification. You're watching WCIU Channel 26, The U. With Steve Stone, Chip Carey on WCIU here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Girardi takes ball one. And it's good to see the main man at Tribune Broadcasting, Dennis Fitzsimons. Always a, good sense, ball game. always a good sense of timing. Yes, indeed. Good night to come out. Well, he knew who to call for tickets. Arnie Harris has all the tickets in the front row. And all the Beanie Buddies, too. <laughs> the 1-0 pitch. Popped up. And out of play, 1-1. One one. What a beautiful night. I mean, look, look at the ballpark. There is nothing like this place at night. You talk about an emerald in the middle of this fabulous city. And look at that view. One ball, one strike. A very slight breeze at the ballpark. A lush, thick, dark green grass. The ivy starting to bloom. And that wonderful perfume that is the ballpark. All the sounds and smells. There's a more intoxicating fragrance for a baseball fan. I wish I knew what it was. A roller toward third. Caminiti backs up. Unloads quickly, and Girardi is retired. And so are the Cubs, but we pick up a run on a hit. Two walks as well, and after three, the Cubs are leading. The Cubs are having fun tonight. With that in mind, it's time to take a look at our Illinois lottery. Fun fact. We all know about that Kerry Wood 20 strikeout game and the evil villain who spoiled the perfect effort, hit-wise, was Ricky Goodyear. And off the glove of Kevin Ory. Could have gone either way at this point. It was early in the game. They called it a base hit, and that was the only hit in a 20 strikeout, and even more impressive, no walk performance. Unbelievable. Certainly one of, if not the most dominating pitching performances in the history of the game. Just tremendous. Darrell Ward. He has a head in the count, two balls, no strikes. Ward, Hidalgo, and Molesky against Kerry Wood. Ward came over in that big deal that brought Jose Lima from Detroit. Well, he's, like you mentioned, he's in a tough spot. His best position probably would be first base, but he can flat out hit. Playable in left, Henry's got it. And the problem he's going to have is that as long as Jeff Bagwell is breathing he's not going to play first base for this Houston team well certainly that's a problem it's almost like in the days when Johnny Bench was playing every day Bill Plummer was a backup catcher and he had some skills but you weren't going to catch for Cincinnati so it really depends on what team brings you to the major leagues and for Ward he had to learn a new position and that was left field in order to get some playing time so one out in the fourth and Hidalgo takes strike one. Big group here from Maryville Academy again today, including Father David Ryan, who was kind enough to st send Stoney a, a nice cigar. You're about ready to unretire from not smoking. It's going to be a few days yet, but I'll let you know. You won't, oh, well, you'll be the first to know. Oh, I know that. I, <laughs> I'll smell you from a, a mile away. Ground ball hits sharply toward green. One hop, low throw, two down. 
That's the best fastball that Kerry Woods thrown was 97 on the first fastball to Hidalgo. So as the game's moving along, Kerry's starting to get loose. And he threw an overhand breaking ball to Hidalgo. So things are working quite nicely so far. That is something that fans don't understand. A guy can actually, like Wood, throw harder as the game goes on. You'd think the opposite would be in effect. Well, you get looser, and like everything else, you know with exercise, the more you get into it, the, the muscles loosen up. You get a little more flexibility, a little more extension, and that holds true with most pitchers. That's why they say if you don't get them early, you're not going to get them. That was the case with Bob Gibson. He would start out throwing 92, 93, 94. By the time he got a lead and you were in the late innings, he was thrown 97, 98. And that kind of philosophy certainly has served our senior producer director, Arnie Harris, well. Not a day goes by that he is not working toward a Schwarzenegger-like physique. High pop, shallow left. Down the line goes Green. In comes Henry. He's got it. Wood has a very easy one, two, three, fourth. Folks, it couldn't be more perfect for Cup fans to see. He's breezing right along, and he's leading 5-5. Native just brought to you by your local Ford store. Quality people, quality products. It's 5 to nothing. Kerry Wood has hit a home run tonight, and Stoney's going for three in a row. Well, his last swing before he got hurt was a home run. Then he stepped up and saw one pitch and hit it out of the ballpark. And the fans on their feet all around the ballpark were roaring for Kerry Wood. He well, I know hit a home Gale, run and he's pitching a shutout. What else can you ask? I mean, I know Gale Sayers in his great career with the Bears got hurt and made a remarkable comeback. Michael Jordan, of course, retired and came back. Certainly, Kerry Wood and his remarkable comeback along those same kind of lines for this town's baseball fans. And who can remember, who can forget Dave Rosello? Okay. You see, you forgot him. I don't know. Go on. I played with him. I think oh. he got hurt and came oh, back. Okay, but. all right, great. I was hoping you'd come down with amnesia <laughs> next. Make it a perfect year. It's coming, too. <laughs> I'm sure. That's next week. <laughs> <laughs> One ball, two strikes to Wood. And Lima misses outside. It's two and two. Well, for this organization, Steve, and there's still obviously a long way to go in this game, a long way to go in this long season. But for this Cubs organization, this has got to be just a sweet, sweet tonic for Ed Lynch, Andy McPhail, Dave Tumbus, the trainers. Dr. James Andrews, who, who performed the surgery. Well, I think this is very much a complete team effort here. You got to, you got to make a decision. Ed Lynch was the guy who had to plot the course, along with, of course, the medical staff. But he had to give his okay on when to bring him back. It was a tough decision for Ed. You know, something he anguished over. But he said about two weeks ago that it was not a medical decision any longer. It was a baseball decision. He felt Kerry was ready. Kerry felt he was ready. And James Andrews, the surgeon in Birmingham, thought he was ready. Pretty good cut by Wood, and Lima strikes him out. And there's a little bit of that ole from Lima. And the crowd even applauds Wood as he is punched out here in our fourth inning. But, you know, you think about, and rightfully so, all the attention is garnered to Kerry Wood and his comeback. Think about the countless hours of rehab work that Cubs trainer Dave Tumbus, Steve Melendez, the rest of the medical staff put in working with Kerry Wood during the offseason, the nutritionists, the sports medicine people who got his body fat down, who got him in shape. Those people deserve as much of those standing ovations as Kerry Wood gets, and I'm sure Kerry will tell you the same thing. Young robbed by Bagwell for out number two. Well, he's about 20 pounds less than he was, and he did work hard coming back. And you've got to believe, Chip, that he had to be single-minded of purpose in order to get back as quickly as he did and as well as he's gotten back. Because he's showing no ill effects. He's throwing the ball almost as hard as he threw it before he got hurt. Now, we haven't seen the real good breaking ball yet. I'm sure that we will. But if it's not there tonight, if he doesn't throw that many of them, that's okay, because right now he doesn't need them. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Is there any kind of a concern that we haven't seen the curveball or the slider at this point? Gutierrez loops it over Biggio's head. Ricky's aboard. I think, Chip, he's just going with what he needs to be successful. 
I mean, so far he really hasn't needed the curveball. He's established a straight change. He's thrown fastballs in good spots. He's got a little extra zip on the fastball. And he's thrown just a couple of breaking balls. And, you know, you show what you need to win. And if he doesn't need it to win tonight, well, then he'll be just that much stronger for it next time out. Which would be Sunday against the Pirates. Here's Grace. He rips another shot all over Biggio's head again. Remember what you used to say about Mickey Morandini? Yeah, Biggio was playing him too low. He's just shaking his head. Well, that's not exactly what you said about the day. You said if we had a normal size <laughs> second baseman, those are easy outs. <laughs> that's what you said. Well, that was about little Mickey. But... <laughs> Biggio and I are much taller than that. They got him listed at 5'11". That may be a bit ambitious. Well, he was playing him 5'10", and it worked out perfectly. But I'll take him on my team. He's no a pretty good player. No question about it. And Sammy with a chance to do a little more damage against his countrymen. Sosa one for two. A base hit his first time up. And that was a show-me pitch. What about all this stuff? All this hullabaloo we're hearing now about guys starting to pitch inside wasn't that whole scenario in Cleveland a bit ridiculous with the way that Pedro Martinez was greeted yeah I, I think so because when he went to hit Alomar you notice that it wasn't exactly a headhunter shot he did hit him in the butt and he wasn't trying to end his career he was just trying to protect his players and then you have stare downs between the hitters and the pitcher and nobody just accepts a high tight pitch and gets back in the batter's box anymore it used to be a show of manhood in the in the recent past Sammy might have broken his back where if somebody threw at you or threw one high and in you just got back in the box you wouldn't ever show them that you intimidated them that's not the case any longer in fact the man who did all the fining chip Frank Robinson had a reputation that no one even threw inside to knock him down because if you did he would just get up and hit the ball 500 feet he became a better hitter after he was knocked down and that's a pretty good reputation to get, but that's one that Frank Robinson had. Well, you could understand to a certain degree why Einar Diaz reacted the way he did, because so few guys pitch inside, he took it as an affront that someone would dare do so to him. But it really was ridiculous to watch him try to stare down and jaw down Martinez after he had ripped a couple of doubles and was hanging out over the plate. Ah, well, the nature of the game in the year 2000. The pitchers just trying to reclaim some of their territory. More power to them. Two balls, two strikes here to Sosa. Two on for the Cubs. And that pitch hung up there, and he popped it up. Into center, Cedeno gallops in. He has it, and the inning is over. No runs, two hits, two left. We're through four. And the Cubs have a big lead. Nothing heading to the Houston half of the fifth inning. And Stoney, a look at our upcoming schedule brought to you by the new Pepsi AC Chewables. It goes without saying that the Cub team seven under has to make some hay with the Astros, Pirates, and Brewers coming in. And the next four are against the Astros and the Pirates. And that's the upcoming schedule for the new Pepsi AC Chewables. We are rooting for those Pirates tonight. They're now beating the Cardinals 3-2 to two in the fourth. Mark McGuire has homered for St. Louis, but the Cardinals leading our division. A chance for the Cubs if we hang on and win tonight to gain a little ground, and it's never too early to start doing that. Cubs come in tonight. Eight games out. The Cardinals with a four-and-a-half game lead over Cincinnati. And the Reds are cruising as well this evening. Bill Spires the batter. Cincinnati's starting to play better baseball and that team can be a very good team now that they have Sean Casey back. Don't forget they will have Barry Larkin back in the not too distant future. But the one thing about the Reds they have to get a little better pitching in their rotation. Just the opposite of what the Cubs have experienced. The Cubs starting rotation has been pretty good. They've had bullpen problems. Cincinnati's bullpen has been very good. They've had rotation problems. And with those rotation problems, I think Jack McKeon would be the first to admit that he's pitched his penmen more than he would like at this time in the season. Because those guys down the stretch last year were just awesome. The last six, eight weeks of the year, they carried them 
to that great year last season in Cincinnati. One ball, two strikes to Spires, who walked his first time up. Carey has given up one hit. That was an infield hit. He's done it without throwing a breaking ball per se. He's thrown two of them. He's doing it with a straight change of fastball, and he's only fanned one man. And that really is a sign of a young fellow who is starting to understand how to pitch instead of just throw. The one two. Punched him out looking. Spires can't believe it. I don't know if he's angry at the umpire, angry at himself, or just plain angry at Kerry Wood because that looked like it was in an unhittable spot. And there's no doubt that Mike Fichter is calling the outside corner, and this isn't a bad pitch. It's certainly close enough, and from the Southwest Airlines plane view camera, we'll take a look at a fastball on the corner. Well, if he's going to call out number two, I'm sorry, partner. If he's going to call that on Sosa, you got to call that on Spires. That one was a lot closer than the one right. on Sammy. Your career and Kerry Wood's career kind of parallel in this regard. We both Kerry. had right arms. Yeah. You threw very hard before you hurt your arm and then had to learn how to pitch. Do you see any parallel with Kerry Wood now? Well, he's come back, Chip, with still a very good fastball. So, I mean, his injury was to the elbow, as you saw. No strike call being given. When you hurt the elbow, the velocity is not going to vary because velocity comes from the shoulder. And you have to worry about the breaking ball. And Kerry has shown he can throw a few of the breaking balls. Hasn't thrown a lot of them as he gets more confidence that his elbow is going to be sound you'll see him throw more breaking balls but I'm I'm thinking he's not going to go back to the pitcher that threw 65 percent curveballs and sliders in that year of 98 I think he's found a weapon in the straight change and it can be one of his best friends and there's a curve that looked like strike three well, again, that's a good guy to use it to a guy that really is not going to hurt you very much if you don't throw a good one watch the knees Whoa. But I think the umpire Mike Victor hasn't seen a yacker like that and he might have given up on it instead Lima serves that ball into the right field corner he's going to try for two oh, he thinks better of it he puts on the brakes and he is aboard with one out here in the fifth inning well I think that even surprised Jose Lima because he hit it right up the first baseline his first hit of the year and we'll watch it again this one is almost by him and Lima, who's bailing out a touch, able to get it right down the line past Mark Grace. And Mark, a face full of infield for his effort. So, so Lima's aboard, and to the top of the order we go. But first, Jose Cruz will hand Lima the jacket on this chilly night. Jose Cruz has to be very happy about the resurgence of his son after some trying times, having to go back to the minor leagues. He seems to have found the magic again with the Toronto Blue Jays. I think he has nine home runs this year, Jose Cruz Jr. White Sox at it again, leading Jose Cruz Jr.'s Toronto Blue Jays, one to nothing in the fourth. The Yankees over the Indians, four to one. Bernie Williams having another great year for New York. White Sox with a two-game lead over the Indians. They have the best record in the American League. to Biggio. He was 0 for 2, 1 for 9 lifetime against Kerry Wood. We're in the fifth. Cubs shutting out Houston. And certainly it's encouraging to see if Wood is basically a two-pitch pitcher at this point in the game. The Astros know it's fastball changeup and still they're not getting real good swings against him. Well, you don't see a lot of guys throw consistently 96-97. He is popping the glove of Joe Girardi. So if you were worried about velocity, folks, as that man might have been, there's no worry about the velocity of Kerry Wood. Now we're going to see a slider. He's had, that's a pitch he's had some problems. He hasn't been able to really pull that one down quite as well as he would have, but that's to be expected. A lot was made about him reworking his mechanics as well in the offseason. First, the pitch to is high. Ball four, two are on, one is out. He threw across his body 
Can you explain to fans in layman's terms just what that means and what alterations have been made? Okay, well, let's say, Chip, you were throwing, you were standing right at home plate. And the pitcher was right in front of you. To throw across your body means that you're stepping more toward the third base side than the first base side. And for a guy that throws a sinker, throwing across his body is good. You might remember the original surgery, Tommy John surgery. Tommy threw across his body, had a very good sinker. He wasn't a hard thrower, and it worked very well for him. Scott McGregor, during my time, threw across his body, had a good sinker. It worked very well for him. But hard throwers want to clear their hips and want to stride more more open more toward the first base side of home plate Kerry was closing himself off a lot of people thought that that might have been the reason why he put a little more strain on his elbow so he's tried to open up the stride somewhat and hopefully it will work for him tonight we haven't seen a lot of problems so far two on for Cedeno who punts toward third green up has to hurry and got him at first for out number two he was bunting for a hit but Willie Green with a good play charged hard and they give Cedeno the sacrifice on that play well this is a terrific play by Willie Green you got a very fast man going down the line Willie has to catch it and throw in one motion and he does indeed get him by a half step good call by Dale Scott and a good effort by Willie Green so the runners advance to second and third that's Biggio and Lima and now Jeff Bagwell 0 for 2 with a couple of flyouts is the hitter Wood off the windup now and that's in for strike one Rick Helling has a no hitter for Texas through five innings and a third we'll keep an eye on that it's a good trick in that ballpark at Tampa Bay Ooh. Well, you worry a little bit about Bagwell in this situation because he felt that he had two very good cuts in the first and third against Kerry Wood and just missed both of them. Now, I knew you threw one fastball by him there, but I don't think you want to go in the same spot. 0-2. Oh, where was that? Looked like a pretty good pitch. And the Southwest Airlines Plainview camera will take a look at a pitch that is off the corner. And a good call by Mike Victor. Again, the crowd roaring for the one-two. Breaking ball. See you later. The best one carries thrown tonight. All three have been called. Introducing the remarkably agile, entirely new, 2001 Aurora by Oldsmobile. It can't escape prey, but it can outmaneuver it. Aurora by Oldsmobile. Here you are, sushi. And wasabi. <laughs> wasabi. Yeah, wasabi. 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 The web has more users in its first five years than telephone did in the first 30. A population the size of the United Kingdom joins the internet every six months. One day the internet will make long distance calls. The thing of the past. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Virtually all internet traffic travels across the systems of one company, Cisco Systems, empowering the internet generation. Are you ready? Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by General Motors, whose commitment to quality brings you outstanding cars and trucks. A long-range sniper terrorizes the... Oh, city. Kerry Wood doing it tonight. Let's check out the pitch sequence to Jeff Bagwell. Starts him out with a good fastball over the outside corner. Then he throws him a very good fastball over the outside corner. 
And then he just misses away and figures, well, I might as well break out the slider. He buckles the knees. He freezes back. Well, it's the best one he's thrown tonight. And when you leave a hitter standing there, as good as Jeff Bagwell, that is a real impressive pit. 80 pitches. He has walked four, and quite honestly, the four walks have not been all that much out of the strike zone. Henry Rodriguez. A foul ball for a strike. Well, in five innings, there's been a couple of hard hit balls. The base hits weren't that hard hit. The one infield hit by Roger Cedeno and the opposite field little leader by Jose Lima, and that's been it. And when I say, granted, a walk is a walk, I mean, he's not missing two feet out of the strike zone. He's missing by an inch or two out of the strike zone. Now, he's been very, very impressive here tonight. And I'm not sure if in our wildest dreams we could have hoped that Kerry Wood would show this good the first time out. He knew he'd have the composure because he's a tremendous competitor and his will to win is unquestioned. And obviously his competitiveness at coming back as quickly as he has is one of the things that speeded up this process because he's come back with just about everything. Now granted he's not throwing the breaking ball quite as much but again he hasn't needed it. He needed it to Bagwell. He broke it out. Henry stands straight up and the count runs full three and two. Once again seventh inning stretch today. Hollywood superstar Mel Gibson will be here to conduct the duties and Steve and I along with Kathy Kerr all very eagerly awaiting his appearance in our booth tonight. I'm sure Kathy Kerr more eagerly awaiting his appearance than you and I. Ripped out of play again by Henry. Standing room only ballpark today. No standing room only seats. <laughs> Smart Alec. <laughs> Fouled away again. Well they're playing Henry around toward left center. They don't figure that he's going to pull the ball off Jose Lima. And that's how they're defensing Henry. Another walk for Lima. Remember this is a guy that came in having only walked 10 men this year. Well, Chip, in the last couple of years, the reason why Jose Lima has been as successful as he was was because he had terrific control. Last year, 44 walks in 246 innings. And that's when Vern Rohl said he was very aggressive, but, you know, that ballpark allowed you to be aggressive. You could pitch to the alleys in center field all day long, and nobody could hurt you in the Astrodome. Not quite like that for Jose Lima these days in his new ballpark at home, and it's pretty much carried over to the road. When you see a guy this good, and by this good, I mean he's won 37 games the last two years, sporting a nine-point ERA. There's something wrong. High fly by Green, smack deep toward left, turn around, Ward. It's gone. Two run homer for Green. He's three out of three. He's driven home four, and the route is on. It's seven nothing Cubs. Jose Lima continues to throw that fastball, and Willie Green continues to tattoo it, and he's a triple away from the cycle in three at bats. He's driven in four runs and along with Kerry Wood and Willie Green they've been pretty much a two man wrecking crew. Wood is homer Green is homer and again you have to wonder about what in the world Jose Lima thinking out there because he's throwing fastballs and saying hit it guys and guys are hitting. And how far did it fly for Southwest Airlines. 373 very happy feet. So the Cubs blasting away at home tonight. Another rocket. This one by Damon Buford into left field. Ward lost the handle for a moment, but no advance by Buford. So walk a homer and a single now. Here comes Vern Rule once again, and there's nobody up in the bullpen to this point. I'm sure they will have to get up here sometime soon. Well, again, that's a concern that Larry Durker had when we were down in Houston. You look back at that Astro Ball Club last season, I think their highest total of appearances out of the bullpen was in the high 60s. Well, take a look at who they had. Lima was terrific as far as complete games and going deep into games. He only completed three, but he averaged over seven innings per start. 
Hampton was terrific. Well, it was Jay Powell was 67, Wagner was 66. No, but I'm talking about I'm talking about starters Start right. getting you to getting you deep in the ball game when you didn't have to go to him. And Larry Durker, when he took over the helm there, first thing he said to his pitchers was, "I'm going to let you go deep into the ball game because I always wanted to complete things that I started. I'm going to give you every opportunity late in the game to finish the game." And that hasn't been the case recently. You look at their pen; they've oh, got it's, it's alarming. Look at all those. Appearances down. Well, four pitchers with a double figure appearances. And it's Henry, Maddox, Powell, and Wagner. And Wagner, you like to have double figure appearances because <laughs> yeah. he's going to pitch maybe an inning tops, sometimes just a couple of hitters. So your closer is not that bad. But middlemen, not real good. So here's Joe Girardi. Two in, one on, not out. Joe is 0 for 2 with an RBI, and there is Mel Gibson. Enjoying the festivities here at Wrigley Field. What a great performer he is. Hello, Mel. The 1-0. Swung on, hit high in the air, deep left center field. Will that one get out of here, too? And well, another home run for Gerard. surprising feet. You throw it right down the middle, it's going to get hit. Wood, another high fly ball. This one, however, will stay in play. One man down here in the fifth. So the Cubs blasting away, leading nine to nothing, and it's only the fifth inning. Gary Wood, well, look at Jose Lima. He can't believe what's happening to him. He still thinks he's in Houston. Oh, my God, it went out of the ballpark. And a bullpen up and going. And Jose Cabrera getting ready in a hurry. Eric Young takes a strike. Well, sooner or later, Lima's going to have to make the adjustment. He hasn't made it yet. He's lost his last four decisions for the Astros. He is not pitching in the dome anymore. But you can't blame Enron Field for this disastrous outing for him. You can excuse him if he might not want pitching to Cubs very much. He's given up eight home runs to them in two starts. And that's a whopping season total, let alone a game and a half total. How many did he give up last year? Got me. I don't think that's on the list. Inside to Young. Lima last year. Young swings through that ball. Is out number two. That's what he's done this year. 13 home runs allowed. Nobody is allowed more. Hits allowed. Nobody is allowed more. And losses tied for second. Last year, Lima gave up 30 home runs and 35 starts. He's given up 13. And this is sixth start. That is alarming for Houston. Ricky Gutierrez, one out of three tonight. Gary Wood has qualified for the win. He's pitched five tremendous innings tonight. He has 
has struck out three, walked four. And the Cubs have battered longtime nemesis Jose Lima. And that one right back up the middle for our 12th hit of the game already. A two-hit affair for Ricky Gutierrez, who is now five out of eight against Lima. I've got to tell you one thing. There's nothing like tormenting the team that decided not to re-sign you. And so Ricky Gutierrez taking particular pleasure in tormenting not only Jose Lima, but this entire Astro organization, because he killed him in Houston. And he's not making life easy on Jose Lima right now. Look at those numbers against the Astros. Well, Ricky, Rick, Ricky will tell you that he says it was always something in Houston. Either his bat wasn't strong enough for their liking or his defense or his range. He never felt he really got a shot. Grace cranks that ball into right center field. Nobody's getting that. Gutierrez will streak around third. The relay will not nearly be quick enough. It's a double for Grace. That scores Gutierrez. And folks, Lima's pitching like he wants nothing else to do with this ball game. Well, he's just throwing the ball down the middle and saying, here, hit it. And some days that's good, but the Cubs are saying, okay. Looks good to me. And that's going to be it for Jose Lima, who didn't do a lot of pitching here today. Did a lot of throwing of the baseball, and the Cubs did a lot of hitting of the baseball. And Mark Grace drives in his 18th run of the year. So Lima against the Cubs has pitched nine and two-thirds innings and has given up 22 runs. Ouch. Cubs in double digits. And yes, Mr. Lima, the sirens are for you. Have a nice night. Rejected from an Eastern college. It hit me big. Jose Lima not very happy. And he usually is a vociferous type fellow. It looks like he was talking with Mike Victor about something. And he gives him the tip of the cap because you know that they were giving him some problems as he came into the dugout. And Jose Cabrera comes into this one for the 10th time, 7.15 ERA. Sosa hits with two men out. It looked for a moment like he was barking at the home plate umpire about some of the calls behind the dish tonight. But frankly, Jose, not that many of your pitches hit the catcher's glove. I don't think the umpire really had a chance to make the call. Uh, Chip, he only walked three guys. But he was very wild in the strike zone. He threw so many balls down the middle. He had a big piece of the plate on too many fastballs. And that's what just got rocketed by the Cub hitters tonight. And if you do that and you're not overpowering and he's not overpowering, he depends on a, a good changeup. And he's trying to work on a sinker, but we're sinking over the outfielder's heads tonight. <laughs> and into the stands. No balls and a strike to Sosa. A high rip. And back out of play. Oh, and two. I'm not suggesting there's anything wrong with his arm. But when you see a guy getting hit as hard as he's getting hit, you have to wonder if physically he's 100% out there. Well, sometimes you just have to make an adjustment, and that adjustment has to come in change of speeds because you're not going to throw any harder than he throws. He doesn't have a Kerry Wood-type fastball. He depended on pinpoint control and a great changeup. But he's lost that pinpoint control. Nothing in two. And Sammy pops that up right side. That might stay in play for Bagwell. Indeed it will. He's under it. He has it. And the fifth inning comes to a close. But the Cubs bat around. We add five more to the total in the fifth inning. The Cubs have battered Jose Lima and the Astros again. It's 10 to nothing here at Wrigley. And without the express written consent of the Chicago Cubs. Well, Cup fans, you won't want to miss this date, the ever-popular Floppy Hat Day. It's Friday, May 19th at the ballpark. The first 10,000 adults aged 21 and over attending the Cubs-Reds game will get a Cubs Floppy Hat compliments of Brunweiser. Boy, if that's not incentive enough, how about Sosa versus Griffey here at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field? Hey, what are we going out to the bleachers? 
it's going to get a whole lot warmer. Ken Caminiti takes the ball. Yeah, that's right. You might end up with a nasty case of the sniffles. That might put you on the DL <laughs> for another couple weeks. Oh, you're still bitter about standing room only seats. Oh. I'm bitter. I had to go to New York and Montreal, and you did. Oh, but that's good, though. I mean, that's that's a nice trip. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry I missed that one. Well, you'll get to go to Montreal again. Yes, Caminiti ropes that foul, and Arnie and I and the crew have decided that since we had to fight our way through that cold weather by ourselves, that every meal is on you. And Just keep Montreal. signing the check. Sure, absolutely. Well, it works for Bob Vorwald. It should work for you, too. And the bullpen now is up and getting ready as Kerry approaches the 100-pitch mark. Let's see if that's called. Nope. nope. So it's three and one. Ryan Williams will start to loosen up. It's a 10 to nothing game. And the crowd starting to buzz with anticipation. Pitch number 85 for Wood. And that's in for strike two. It would be ludicrous to even consider pitching Kerry Wood nine innings, even if he wanted to, even if he could do it. And with this lead, there's really no reason to, although he did throw that one 97 miles an hour. And he went around that time. Caminiti down on strikes. One away here in inning number six. Well, you can tell he's just starting to feel pretty good on the mound because he's mixing the breaking ball in. And the fastball is faster than it's been at any time this evening, and this is pretty much unfair. Caminiti cannot check his swing, and from the Southwest Airline Plainview camera, we'll look at strikeout number four. And there is the Plainview camera of Southwest Airlines high atop Wrigley Field. So here is Daryl Ward. Ward's had a couple of pretty good hacks against him. He's driven Henry to the wall and left, and Damon Buford caught a ball in straightaway center field. There's no question this guy can hit. The question is defensively, what can he do? And he has just spoiled the shutout. A laser beam into right. We told you he can swing the bat. And just like that, it's a 10 to 1 game. Sixth home run of the year for Ward is 15th run batted in. And obviously something was wrong with that baseball. The fans throw the defective Rawlings back. And Ward scores against Woody. Gary throws him a low fastball, and Ward is all over this one. And he pretty much knows it's gone when he left the bat. So it's 10 to 1 now here in the sixth. And Richard Hidalgo, the batter, robbed by Sosa. Great running, diving catch in the second. He also tapped out to third. And Hidalgo swings and misses strike one. I would imagine this will be the finale for Wood. Well, I'm thinking, Chip, that he would go six or 100 pitches, and he's going to probably go six and knocking on the door of 100 pitches. I think that'll probably be enough. He's at 90 right now. And with this kind of a lead and this performance, you want to leave him with a good feeling about this performance, and he should have one right now. One ball, one strike. Bob straight back. And folks, you've heard roars, standing ovations here at Wrigley Field on the south side at the United Center at Soldier Field. Wait till you hear the one that Kerry Wood's going to get at the end of this sixth inning. A little pop right side. Tough play. Crace on the run. Young on the run. Ewi hangs on. He got it. Two down. Pretty good play by Eric Young as he crossed over into foul territory. This would have been most difficult for Mark Grace, but Young with good speed. Checks and see where Sammy is. He's calling for it now, and Grace gives way. And a little bobble, but he does corral it. Ooh, traps it against the body. Not a bad job. Looks like a good wide receiver. So two outs. Base is clear. And here's Molesky. He bounced to first fly to left and is 0 for 2. One ball, no 
strikes. Again, a lot of good tickets available for this homestand. After the Astros leave town, the Pirates are in. The next Kerry Wood start, assuming everything is okay, it would be Sunday. That would be the series finale. Don't forget, another very important member of this Cup ball club, and we don't want to overshadow him, will also make his debut on this series against the Astros, and that's Ishmael Valdez. He'll go Thursday against Scott Ellerton. You cannot underestimate or overestimate the importance of having these two guys in the rotation. It's like getting two number one starters in the middle of your rotation without giving anything else up. Well, it's a huge addition, and Kerry Wood, not only with what he can do in the rotation physically, but just his presence. He's a very likable guy who's very popular on this team. Little line drive. He wide leaps and he rips it home. With a leaping catch. Use the leather that time. Kerry Wood has gone six. He's given up a run and a standing ovation for him at the friendly confines. better copies. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you by Dodge. Do not follow. Do not conform. Be different. Chuck, it's Rennie. I'm stuck. Call me back. Wants to go back out again. Now the question is, will Don Baylor allow him to? He's not at the 100 pitch mark yet. Right around 94, 95 pitches. He's looked better and better as the game has moved along. And what a performance, including a home run. He's given up just one run on three hits. And his Cub teammates, especially the bottom part of this order, have been devastating here tonight. Well, you look at his three rehab starts in A ball and Triple A. The pitch count, 90 in his first one, 102 in the second one, and 99 in Triple A at Iowa. Well, he so said he's not going to throw no, there. He said he felt strong enough to go over 100 pitches tonight. Upstairs, one ball, one strike. Joe Girardi's done a terrific job. I haven't seen Kerry Wood shake him off maybe a couple times tonight. That was about it. So pretty much Joe has called the entire game and done a real good job of it. He had a good feeling early about just letting Kerry use the fastball wear down that adrenaline rush that you know that he had and then he started mixing in the straight change first and then the slider after that nice job of calling a baseball game by Joe Girardi and that's something we had talked about in the early moments of this ball game how important Joe Girardi would be to the overall success of the start for Kerry Wood Joe's been through the wars before and he's done an excellent job calling this game quite obviously and Kerry most likely felt pretty comfortable with the sequence that he used with getting his feet on the ground with the fastball then throwing the straight change and nobody really was on his straight change so the motion had to be very good with it and then just when they pretty much least expected it he broke out the breaking ball and really mystified the Houston's Henry hits a high fly ball on a 3-2 pitch to straightaway left easy play out there for Darrell Ward and he makes it and there is out number one well, a triple right here, and Willie Green will hit for the cycle. And each and every at-bat, he's driven at least one run. Well, that streak is going to end unless he hits it out of the ballpark because there's nobody on. Well, there you go. Wow. Mark Grace hit for the cycle? Well, he has much better speed than you think. He's stolen a base here tonight. That is true. And now it looks like Brian Williams up once again in the pen, so this probably will be it for Kerry Wood. Swing and a miss by Willie Green as we have hit the 9 o'clock hour in Chicago. 10 to 1, the Cubs thumping Houston. 
You saw in that graphic, too, our other partner, the Rebel Randy Hunley, hit for the cycle, too. But there, there were some confounds and Dahl Gerns as he rounded second and chugged for third. Well, the, the left fielder must have broken his leg and for Rebel to hit for a or, cycle with a triple. Or your favorite former major leaguer, Long John Silver, <laughs> was playing out there. Well, the jacket's on now for Kerry Wood. It is a cool night. Williams is up in the pen. And if I'm a gambling man and I'm not, I still take Kerry Wood out of this yes, ball game. You've gotten exactly what you want from him. Full count to green, three balls, two strikes. Well, you know Willie's going to see a fastball here. Let's see if he can turn on one. He does. He's four out of four. Well, all of a sudden, Stoney, you see the bits and pieces of this ball club starting to come together. A nice lefty-righty platoon at third base. And there you see what Kerry Wood has done tonight time for Willie Green that he's had a four hit game last time was July 1st against Baltimore when he played with Toronto Buford a little roller it's a foul ball the Cubs have just rocked the Astros pitching staff for 14 more hits today The Astros had been a pretty good road club. They just took three out of four from Milwaukee. But the Cubs took two of three from them in Houston. And Jose Lima still hanging around. Watching to see what his teammates do, if they can get back into this one. If you ever wondered what Mr. Cosmopolitan and Mark Brady looked like, that's a pretty good representation. Close to it. One ball, one strike. Astros looking for a pair here. It's one and two. First final in the National League is in. The Reds have shut out Philadelphia tonight. Seven to nothing. The Phillies with a grand total of two hits in that game. Junior went 0 for 4 for the Reds. Sean Casey drove in two. Pokey Reese drove in a pair. Philly team is a real, real mystery. That's a much better offensive club than they have shown this year, but they just can't hit anybody or anything. And Cincinnati with now one game over 500 moves to four games in back of St. Louis pending the outcome of that game, and Pirates find themselves tied now with the Cardinals. 1-2 to Buford. Here's pulled foul. Look at the Philly averages. Doug Glanville, 238. Mickey Morandini, 250. Bobby Abreu is hitting 337. Roland, 247. Lieberthal, 238. Bronia, 225. That's somewhat surprising because you look at that team last year, Chip. They did nothing but hit. And they've got some quality hitters in that lineup. I mean, lifetime quality hitters. And yet, they're just off collectively to a, just a horrendous start. And watch the bat hit Mitch Molusky. Whack. Damon is there with the handle. One, two. Way high. We told you about that Cardinal game. Big Mac has hit a home run for St. Louis. They just tied the game at four. It's Rick and Keel against Jason Schmidt. As they play at Bush Stadium in St. Louis, they now move to the sixth. Colorado's clubbing Montreal six to nothing tonight. And Arizona leads at Milwaukee three to one in the seventh. Two balls, two strikes to Buford. And a little pop. That ought to be easy for Hidalgo. And it is. Two down. Really interesting, Chip, how some teams have the number of another team. We seem to play well against Atlanta and have for the last two and a half years. Well, Colorado is the only team that's beaten St. Louis in a series, and they've beaten them twice. They beat them at home, and they beat them in St. Louis. And for some reason, Colorado not off to a particularly good start. At 12 and 14, has dominated the Cardinals, who were off to a terrific start at 17 and 8. It's a funny game. You just never know. As Girardi takes... One. I mean, who would have thought 
that as bad a year as the Cubs had last year, how well we would play, as you mentioned, against Atlanta. And then come in this year and sweep them three straight here. Well, we got them mad, that's for sure, because they won 14 straight. A high drive hit to right by Girardi, but that one's playable. Hidalgo camps out, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one man left. We're through six. It's all Cubs, 10 to one here at Wrigley. Let's look at our WGN box here at beautiful Wrigley Field. Tony Colosimo and the good folks at McGrath Lexus enjoying the return of Kerry Wood tonight. His night, Stoney, has come to a close. And man, you couldn't have asked for anything more than what he gave us tonight. Now, if you're going to write a script for this one, you want a guy to dominate, you want him to hit a home run. That's exactly what Kerry Wood did. He saw one pitch, hit it out of the ballpark, gave himself that four run lead after the Cubs had taken an early lead without his offensive efforts. And he pitched great. Three hits through six innings, gave up just one run. And you'd have to say that the young man is back. And that's not good news for the rest of the National League, but it's real good news for us as we play our first game in the month of May. So Bill Spires leads things off for Houston. He is 0 for 1 with a walk. He was called out on strikes back in inning number five. And Kerry took it to 96 pitches, and Don Baylor thought that was just enough. So now with a big lead, Brian Williams has to get the ball over the plate. And if he does, Kerry Wood will win his first game of the year and this his first start. But an immeasurable lift to this ball club. Activity in the Houston pen as the pitcher spot is due up next. Spires looks at ball two. Jay Powell is up in the Houston pen. Berkman, who has taken Moise Salou's spot on the active roster for Houston, is in the on-deck circle. Salou is on the DL with a strained calf muscle that he suffered in our series down in Enron Field. Tim Caminiti looking out, can't be very happy with the way his Astro Ball Club is playing at this point. It certainly hurts him to have Alou missing from this lineup. That is a huge bat. And Lou is off to a great start, hitting 390. Missed outside. Three balls, two strikes. Brian has struggled with his control from the moment he put that Cub uniform on. This is a very big outing for him, Chip, because they have to make one more roster move on Thursday when they activate Ismael Valdez. And right now, the team has 12 pitchers. Did he go? Yeah, they say he did. Either he went or it was a strike call to the outside corner. No matter how you ring it up, it's out number one. Big pitch for Brian Williams and for the Cubs. This one well off the plate, but Spires cannot check his swing, and Mike Victor says that he went around, and Spires goes down on strikes for the second time tonight. Mel Gibson is in the house. And he'll be conducting our seventh inning stretch in just a couple more outs. And we can sense the ladies swooning already all around the ballpark as Lance Berkman stands in for the Strohs. Ten to one is our score. Yes, you're on TV. She was talking to somebody watching the game. She's mastered the cell phone. Now, have you mastered the cell phone and the communication with someone else while you're on TV yet? Oh, I definitely have. I'm a master of technology. Stephen T. Stone. No, it's K. <laughs> From here on out, pal. <laughs> Two balls and a strike. The Astros farm system still producing players, but not as rapidly as it has in years past. As Berkman is aboard. You remember back to that Randy Johnson deal. They got Randy a couple of years ago. He won 10 of 11 down the stretch, but they paid dearly to get him. And how 
much they wish they had the guys they gave up. Well, they, they lost Randy. For they gave up John Halama, who is in the starting rotation. Garcia would have been in the starting rotation, but he's been hurt. Right. And then Jose Guillen. Carlos Guillen is a pretty good player, and he's playing now in the infield for them. And if he hadn't torn up his knee last year, he'd have probably been, well, at least a shot at being an All-Star. He got up to a good start, then nothing, and now he's playing third base. So they did pay dearly for a man that helped them win the division, but they couldn't go too much farther than that. Vigio, the batter for the Astros, 0 for 2 with a walk. And when you think about what Houston has lost in the last three years, Daryl Kyle, gone. Randy Johnson, gone for nothing. And they had to trade Mike Hampton. At least they got something for him, for he is a free agent at season's end. A high fly into right center, playable for Buford. Vigio is still hitless on the night. Time to take a look at our email question of the day. And our email question, Stoney, comes from Mike Trafton out of Joliet, Illinois. And the question is, he's heard many stories about where the mud comes from to rub up the baseballs before the game. Where does the mud come from, and who is responsible for retrieving it? Well, that's easy. It comes from the ground, Chip. Wow. And you just mix dirt with a little water. Really? And yeah, you get mud. I didn't know that. That's pretty impressive. Baseball acumen there. Here's Cedeno. Actually, it's from the Delaware River. And the umpires carry around a can of that mud, I believe. And they rub up the baseballs, which are provided by the home team. Five dozen of them per game. To take the gloss or the shine off the rawhide. And if you have any more questions that deserve a sarcastic answer from my partner, <laughs> there's our email address, Cubs TV at chicagosports.com. The pitch. Little ground ball hit toward Ricky. He's got it. He gloves. He grabs. He guns. He got him, and the inning is over. And Chicago, let's welcome Mel Gibson for our seventh inning stretch. Welcome to 92 Kiss FM night at Wrigley Field. We're the morning show hosts. I'm Paul Peterson. And I'm Melissa Foreman. We're happy to introduce tonight's seventh inning stretch guest conductor, ladies and gentlemen, Academy Award winner, Mel Gibson. the seventh inning a couple of changes to announce Jay Powell is on to pitch for the Astros Shane Andrews came in on the double switch so he'll lead things off for the Cubs as we try to even up our homestand record at two and two Steve Stone Chip Carey from beautiful Wrigley Field along with that man there he is Mel Gibson very fine job conducting the seventh inning stretch Thank you. didn't even jump out the window I mean no I tried you know but you certainly made it things very interesting. Tell us what you're in town to do. Great movie, I understand. What Women Want, right? Yeah, what Women Want. It's a, sort of a romantic comedy about a guy who can read women's minds. Now, so. now my partner wanted to know, is, is this a sadistic movie or is this a comedic movie? It's comedic, mainly. <laughs> there are there are aspects of sadism <laughs> interwoven in the comedy. Yes. But, but, what you know. Women Want? It's a good question, isn't it? The, well, indeed, one that we keep asking over and over and over again. No one will get to the bottom of it. <laughs> I certainly won't. Not in this lifetime, anyway. You have another week in Chicago, and I know that you shot another movie here, Payback, a little while ago. You yeah. must enjoy shooting here. I dig it. I think it's it's real easy to shoot here. Everybody's really friendly. Um, it's, uh, it's just logistically simpler. 
in a place like New York. Or... Have you been in Wrigley Field before? This is my first time. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it is gorgeous, yeah. Yeah, my dad comes from here. So, uh, you know, he's from Illinois. So, uh, you know, it's kind of good to come here. I've got family and relatives and stuff here. And I only met some of them the last time I was here for the first time ever. So. Well, come back again because it's a great place to watch a baseball game. And you're on, you come at night when it's electric around the ballpark because yeah. Kerry Wood has come back and made a wonderful season oh, debut. Yeah. Well, they're on fire. What's it like when you walk? I mean, Steve can answer this question because the same thing happens to him. But what's it like walking <laughs> into a room where the ladies just swoon at your mere presence? Like, well, uh, that doesn't happen as much as it used to. You know, I'm getting <laughs> older and uglier. No, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, speaking for the ladies who are in the booth, I mean, it's standing room only up here for crying out loud. Oh, really? Well, they? right behind you, pal. <laughs> I must be thick. I don't notice it too much. <laughs> now, there's Kathy Kerr, our lovely and talented producer, is almost beside herself. She's so nervous. She's Tanya. crying. Oh Tanya, Tanya Avila, <laughs> who's dating Mark Grace. Back here, she made a special appearance coming up to see you. I mean, this is... I mean, she doesn't usually come up No, here. She, not to see our no. ugly mugs. <laughs> Annie Kleiser's here, too, from the front. You've met Annie already. She's taking you around here at the ballpark, so... I'm flattered. You're getting the full treatment. The, the, Great. The full I'm going to massage you. The, the full... <laughs> You're on your own, pal. It's no, for you. I'm no, not. no. Well, <laughs> talk to him. Eric Young is the batter with one out here in the Cubs half of the seventh inning. It's all Cubs 10 to 1. A little pop-up on the infield. Jeff Bagwell nears the Astro dugout. He puts it away, and there's out number two. Mel, a great film resume. Obviously, it all started with the Mad Max series and, I guess, the Lethal Weapon series, too. Is there any one movie that you've made that stands out as your personal favorite? Um, I think I got a special attachment to the Braveheart film because right. of that. Just because I directed it, right. I was so involved with it. You know, it's right. so hard work, you know. And it, you know, paid dividends, so I kind of feel a special attachment for that one. Prefer the acting to directing or directing to acting, or is it That's just... a tough question. I mean, they're they're inextricably linked, but I think uh, directing's where the real fun's at, you know. Did you get a, a real good feeling for the directors you had when you were just an actor when you moved on the other side of the camera as a director also? No, absolutely. I, I was able to empathize with all of them. <laughs> it's got to be a pretty tough job to do. Um, it, it is. It's, there's a lot of questions and a lot of places your mind has to be. But, uh, it's uh, certainly uh, a lot of fun. It's big storytelling. One ball, one strike to Ricky Gutierrez. For the Cubs, 14 hits in the game. And a little chopper toward third. Good play over there by Ken Caminiti. Indeed he is. Mel Gibson, we appreciate you being here. Good luck with the movie, yeah. What Women Want. Thank you. And please stop by and see us again. I will. Thanks All for right, the great Mel Gibson as the Cubs routing the Astros 10-1. to 1. After seven, before the Astros come to hit here in the eighth, let's pause for station identification. You're watching WCIU, Channel 26, The U. Steve Stone, Chip Carey back at beautiful Wrigley Field. You talk about a perfect night for Cubs fans around the country, around the city, and around the world. This has been a perfect night. It all started with Carey Wood's arm, then his bat, and the team took care of the rest. Well, there was a few questions when Carey Wood took the mound tonight. First of all, would he feel good enough to go 100 pitches into the game? Would he be effective? Would he have the control? All those questions put to rest. And the one question we didn't think much about was, would he be able to hit? And the answer to that was yes also. Well, maybe the most impressive thing that we have seen tonight, too, besides that, was the fact that Tanya Missy Lorraine and Kathy Kerr survived the Mel Gibson appearance. I mean, folks, if you could have seen it up here, it was amazing. Kathy is still shaking. She's so excited. Bagwell rips it out of play foul. Two and two. But he, I was really disappointed because I, I mean, when you walk into a room, the ladies just are beside Leave. Them beside themselves that well <laughs> and they leave Very right simple but you know <laughs> they seem to congregate around him though right, right. swing and a miss by Bagwell he's out on strikes and there is our first out of the eighth inning you think it's his rugged good looks his acting ability or the eight billion dollars that he has 
Maybe I, a combination of all three. I think three. it depends on who you ask, pal. <laughs> but he seemed like a very nice guy, and I feel like a dope for forgetting the uh, Braveheart movie, which was my personal favorite. Just a, an incredible story. You know, you're, as an actor, you know you're going good when your character dies at the end and you still get the girl, and that's what happened to Mel Gibson's <laughs> character, William Wallace, in, in the movie Braveheart. And the way you're going, pal, you <laughs> when you produce and direct the film and star in it, you're pretty busy, and he shot that in for two years. And that's how he did that whole production. Caminiti grounds out for out number two. You know, I traveled for nine years with the NBA, and every now and then we'd get to watch movies on the team plane. And there was only one movie that they ever showed on the team plane where the players as a group applauded at the end of the movie in the team plane and it was the Braveheart movie I mean it's just such an incredible story an incredible piece of cinematic art that uh, even guys that aren't used to giving out praise perhaps as freely as we would all like were effusive in giving it to that great flick by Mel Gibson and we wish him the best with his new film what women want and I think if he's in it, we know what women want. And uh, hope he, hopefully he has a nice stay here in the great city of Chicago. Daryl Ward is the batter. Pretty good appearance by Brian Williams as he tries to make whatever decision the Cubs have to make on Thursday that much more difficult with a good outing today. Brown ball he is foul past first. Well, one of our great WGN cameramen, Win Griffiths, wants to wish a happy first birthday to Lily today. So, happy birthday, Lily. All right. Hey, Win, nice job. We appreciate all your efforts. Great work as always. By our WGN slash WCIU crew at beautiful Wrigley Field. Fox game tomorrow. And Thursday, we're on GN as Ishmael Valdez will make his Cup debut and close out the series against these Astros. Next Monday night against the Milwaukee Brewers, the Cubs will be on WCIU, Channel 26. Second walk for Brian Williams. This one, the two out variety in the eighth. And boy, uh, the vendors, I'm sure, are happy to see that merchandise making its appearance again. Everybody is different, quite obviously. Everyone heals at a different rate. Everyone responds to surgery in a different way. And to echo the sentiments of some of the writers here in the city of Chicago, we're all hoping that the Tommy John surgery will someday be renamed the Kerry Wood surgery. If this guy goes on to win 300 games, it very well may. Well, pitching like he did tonight, he's going to have very little problems because he was just terrific. And what was most impressive to you tonight? The fact that he could harness the emotions early and get the ball over the plate. I mean, he did walk one guy in the first inning, one guy in the second, one guy in the third, but he seemed to be in control of most everything. And that carried over a little bit later as he mixed in the breaking ball. I was impressed with the straight change because it's not a weapon that we've seen, but he said he was working on it as he came back from this because that's all he was allowed to throw was fastball and straight change. When he first came back, he wasn't allowed to throw any breaking ball at all, and that could really help him. One ball, one strike to Richard Hidalgo. The attendance tonight, 38,121. It is a sellout. Folks, like we said, hopefully this is the start of something special for this summer of 2000 for the Cubs. Assuming everything goes our way the rest of the way, we'll even up our homestand record at 2-2. Two two. The Cubs will move to 11-17. And, and we'll look to solidify that starting pitching staff and the bullpen, too. But with good seats available for virtually the next month, You'll want to make sure you pick them up in a hurry. Again, 
John Lieber tomorrow. And he dominated Houston in the road trip finale down at Enron Field. Then Valdez goes on Friday, or on Thursday, I beg your pardon. Then the Pirates are in for the weekend. A little pop on the infield. Easy play at second for Eric Young. He's got it. And Williams navigates the eighth without too much trouble. No runs, no hits. One man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Grace Sosa and Rodriguez are due as it's Kerry Woods' night tonight. I have to explain just exactly what happened. And Jose is explaining to everyone just about what happened. And most of the guys really don't want to hear it all that much. And then... You put on the cap and you just sit back and wait for the game to end. And you do your Mark Brady impersonation. <laughs> and he'll be probably doing some of Mark's other impersonations at the end of this ball game. Mark Grace leads things off. And activity in the Cubs bullpen. Is that Mr. Aguilera? And that is Mr. Aguilera, who really needs an inning to stay sharp. And this is the ideal time to do it. Two good innings, by the way, from Brian Williams. He threw the ball very well. And this is as well as he's thrown it in some time, so... A very encouraging outing from him. Two innings, two walks, two strikeouts, and Mark Grace robbed of the hit. And that spoils his perfect night with the bat. Gracie, three out of four now. Two singles, a double, a walk, and a run scored. Also, his first stolen base of the year. So here comes Sammy Sosa. Sosa won for four, a base hit. Back in the first. Fly ball hit to right field. That's playable for Hidalgo. And there's out number two. Doug Henry is the pitcher, by the way, for the Astros. And this will be an interesting confrontation here. It was Henry who hit our Henry. Henry Rodriguez, after a two-home run game last time we faced the Astros. It was a two-run homer, then a grand slam. And then Henry hit him right under the right armpit. So we'll see if... Anybody has a bit of lingering hostility here in this Cubs blowout? A line drive left center field. That's how you answer him, Henry. A camper to left. And Rodriguez stroll into second with his second double of the day. Well, Henry is at his best when he takes the ball to left and left center field. Because eventually then they're going to have to come in, and that's the ball that he wants to hit out of the park inside. So both of his doubles tonight have been to left and left center. And you can tell he's feeling a lot more comfortable because to hit the ball and drive it that way, you have to wait on it. And so Henry not very happy with our Henry's performance. So Brian Williams will hit for himself here in Lima. Saying, yeah, I'm one and five. I can't believe it. And that's what his record will fall to at the end of this night. Willie Green, a huge night for the Cubs tonight. Went four for four, drove in four, scored twice. And there's a rope hit by Williams straight away left. That's over the head of Ward. Rodriguez scores. And Williams with a double himself. The Cub pitchers have been pretty good tonight. Brian Williams with a ringing double. Kerry Wood hit a two-run homer in the second inning. And the route continues. Brian Williams hasn't had an opportunity to swing the bat too much but he shows you right here and this is first at bat of the year and he hit the ball pretty well fourth career double for Williams his RBI makes it an 11 one game and there's another drive by Buford Ward though has this one eyed and he makes the play to retire the side a run two hits one left we go to the ninth inning Cubs blowing out the Astros it's 11 to 1 night indeed for Cubs fans everywhere 11 to 1 Kerry Woods return a ringing success six innings of three hit one run four strikeout baseball and for good measure he also hit a home run and drove in a pair tonight and 
so Brian Williams will go to work here in the ninth inning. So Williams will face the lower third of the Houston order. Molusky spires. And then we'll see who comes out next for Houston. Same two teams tomorrow afternoon. John Lieber against Chris Holt, who threw a gem his last time out. A one-hitter up in Milwaukee. It was really the game of his life. He was just terrific. And that's something they've been looking for for Chris Holt for some time. He came in really struggling. His ERA just under eight. And he threw a shutout, only the second shutout all year for the Astros. Williams misses with ball one. 11 1 in favor of the Cubs, and our senior producer, director of Cubs baseball in his 37th year. The legendary Arnie Harris. Cubs baseball on Cubs net. WCIU is the commander, Pete Toma. Also doubles as our ambassador to Canada in his off time. Mark Brady. Mr. Cosmopolitan is our associate producer, and the executive producer of the Cubs Television Network is Bob Borwall. The rooftops packed this evening. Everybody wanting to get a piece of the comeback of Kerry Wood and tell their families and friends and children that they were here to see it and what a show he gave them this evening. Is this about what you expected you'd see tonight? I thought he'd be pretty good. I thought that he would have tremendous velocity, which he did. I didn't expect the home run. I don't know if anybody really did. But he's got tremendous composure on the hill, and he is a wonderful competitor. That is not going to go away. Uh, the only question that I had is, would his control be good enough? And it certainly was, and it helped that he had a big lead early. He helped give himself that lead. But when you've got four on the board in the second inning, it helps you relax, and I think Maybe Don Baylor went up to him and said something like that. And we saw both smiles on their faces in the second inning. He had gotten through two, shown he could get the ball over the plate. And I think it helped him a lot. High hopper. Ricky, shoot top grab. Great play over to first one down. Folks, he's doing it all. I think you're going to see the Houston Astros bring out the best in Ricky Gutierrez. He makes a terrific play here. He doesn't want this one to bounce again. So he comes across, picks it right up off the dirt. The off-balance throw is perfect. And Gutierrez has Molusky by plenty. So one out here in the ninth inning. And Bill Spires will be the hitter. Spires has walked and struck out twice. All Cubs tonight. On a magical, magical Tuesday night in Chicago. Spires lofts that ball softly to left. That's going to be easy. Henry under. He's got it. And we're one out away. And I don't know if Kerry Wood collects such memorabilia, but whoever gets this last out better be sure to hand him the baseball after this ball game tonight. Well, you have all of the fans here on their feet. They knew that they saw something special here this evening. The return of Kerry Wood. Certainly an energized baseball team for the Cubs this evening. And they just pounded Jose Lima and the Houston Astros. So Tony Eusebio is their final hitter, and Williams blows it right by him. He's after a save. He's pitched three effective innings tonight. And regardless of the score in the game, that is a qualification for Williams. A little looper down the right field line. That's trouble. It's in the corner. Eusebio runs with catcher speed. Sosa will concede the double. And the Astros aren't done yet here in the ninth. And that means you got to face the top of their order. Vigio is scheduled. Looks like he's out of the lineup, Chip. And they're going to put up a pinch hitter for him. Russ Johnson will be the man. So Johnson in the ninth will represent the final hope. I want to remind Cubs fans everywhere to make sure you visit the Cubs internet site, www.cubs.com. That site features minute-by-minute, minute, play by play of the game, stats, live audio broadcasts, brought to you by Yahoo Broadcast, daily game notes, online access to Cubs tickets, and much, much more. Cubs.com is an affiliate of ChicagoSports.com. Steve Stone, Chip Carey from the ballpark. One out away from our 11th victory of the year. Folks, 
but you're going to see a couple of real big smiles in the press conference room after this one tonight. Don Baylor's going to have one of them. Terry Wood's going to have the other. And the faces you may not see are Ed Lynch and Andy McPhail, as well as Dr. James Andrews in Birmingham, Dave Tumbus, the Cup trainer. I think uh, Brian Williams hurt himself on the last pitch. Oscar Acosta is going out there talking to him, and I, I hope it's not something in his side. Let's watch it again and see if... He pulled up a little short, and normally Joe Girardi wouldn't go out there, but Brian Williams looked like he has some discomfort out there. You know, you know he wants to finish this up, and hopefully he's okay. Two balls, no strikes to Johnson. The 2 0 pitch. Little pop. Will it stay in play? Girardi. He eyeballs it. Throws the mask away. And it's white flag time here at Wrigley Field. Cubs blow out the Astros 11 1. And folks, welcome back to the win column, Kerry Wood. He wins his return, and that sign, yes, tells the story. Nearly two years to the day, Kerry Wood was not as eye-popping with the strikeouts, but Stoney was just as devastating. He worked six magnificent innings in this one to earn the win. Well, really, only one hard-hit ball, and that was off the bat of Daryl Ward as he hit a home run in the sixth inning, and that was about it. You go six innings against this team, you give up three hits, you got to feel pretty good about that outing. So Kerry Wood is 1-0. Jose Lima drops his fifth in a row, falls to 1-5. Brian Williams the save, and the K's are back. Kid I wanted options. Cancer Treatment Center.